friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our series uh, software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter four talking about the test design techniques and uh, we are continuing ahead with our 4.4 experience based techniques where we discuss about a quick outline of what exactly experience based techniques are and it's time to get started with our very first technique to understand how exactly this can be applied. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be talking about the very first technique under this category of experience-based testing is error guessing. If you recall some of the understanding from our previous tutorial that we discussed that experience-based testing makes use of the experience of the person, certainly given that the person has some good understanding of the domain or uh, testing similar type of products and at the same time has a good knowledge of typical defects. This all could be put together be an approach to be used uh, in order to define uh, the best testing despite you don't have set of test cases or uh, you don't have provision to write your test cases. So in this context, uh, generally experienced person looks forward to predict the possible uh, errors which can happen. So a journey could be anything, you know, taking a simple scenario here that you might be talking about testing a system which has been formally tested already and now you want to top up with more coverage or more confidence on a given scenario and you would like to do more testing but you want you don't want to go with the formal because you have already done uh, some formal testing with set of test cases now on top of it say for example you took your execution executed results to your manager and manager looks at your test data and says Okay, can you even try with X, Y, Z, another three values given by the test manager to you and you give it a try and run those executions with those tests of the set of test data which your manager just provided you. Now the point here is, did that give him any kind of clue that these are the values which are missing or these are the values which are part of requirement? No, not at all. It's just the past experience of the test manager where he thinks or she thinks that it could be possible because in past we have got issues or defects on these set of data as well because he or she has been testing such applications from a long time. So error is being guessed here and if the execution finds any anomalies, that means your confidence, your experience has helped you to find a great defect. On the other side, sometimes when you don't have any formal way of writing test cases or you cannot do formal testing in certain requirements where you, do, do you, you don't really understand that what exactly should be the set of test cases, what we should be writing. So particularly for those requirements, you can speak to a consultant, you can speak to a domain expert and try to understand that what kind of data, what kind of exercises a user can perform, where do you think the system can go wrong where do you think the system can get can get stuck right so we look forward to you know consult them and they give us those guest errors that hey generally i feel that these are the things which generally go wrong so can you just give it a try now these are informal techniques so not necessarily test cases are written even if it is written it will be very high level and we only detail the test cases formally if uh, execution fails or a defect is detected. So given that this is one of the informal way of testing the system, we do not prefer to write detailed test cases. Keep it high level if we are writing as well and uh, make sure that only when the defect happens, we try to elaborate the test cases formally, write them down, mark the status as fail and lock the defect and link them back to the requirement as well as the test case. So this is the major approach what we follow as a part of this technique called as error guessing. And just because of its unique approach of predicting the error and then testing the system is we call this approach as fault attack. The approach of executing error guessing is called as fault attack because in our ordinary testing, we do not know what defect we are looking for. Thus, we call it as testing and not fault attack. But here, we know what defect we are looking for, given that the person has the understanding of the system, he's predicting or she's predicting the uh, typical defects, and then based on those defects, your execution is laid out. And this is where we 
don't call it as ordinary testing rather we prefer to call it as fault attack which is something very different to talk about right so that's all from this particular technique team i hope you got a good understanding of that should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning